You know, I get a lot of comments about the use of 3D printing in my builds. 3D printing isn't crafting. Anycubic did send me a printer to review in this video, and I'll tell you my thoughts on it a bit later. 3D printing isn't crafting. All right, all right, I get it. I'm gonna get rid of it. Now that that's taken care of, I've decided to go back to my roots, abandoning technology and using only primitive tools to create my craft. So let's build something like a caveman. Oh, or woman. Before I had thrown out the 3D printer, I did manage to print off some new designs I've been working on. I'm calling these the Decan Automatons, and the idea for them is sort of inspired by one of my patrons, James. He wanted to make a wargaming army that mixed the visual look of Daleks and Necrons. Thanks, James. Using this measuring stick, I decide on the rough dimensions of the structure. These genocidal robots need a sort of portal or monolith-style structure to come out from. So that's what this crude depiction is sort of meant to convey. Yeah, see, they come out of here and they shoot their lasers and stuff. Perfect. Envisioning and painting these myself was a treat because I specifically designed plenty of recesses and large details to catch my brush and take washes really well. Check out how nice it looks after some Agrax or shade. Got really wild with the bases using these very bright saturated greens and blues to get very alien vibes going. You can grab the miniatures from the link in the description, but let's get back to the caveman crafting, shall we? Before we start building, we're going to need some tools. I'll first need something to cut my materials with. Using more of that stick from before, I trimmed it to fit my hand and attached this piece of chert with a lot of rope to hold it in place. Testing it out, it takes a couple passes but seems to cut through primitive cardboard well enough. We're also going to need some glue. I've read that you can make some really good glue from rawhide, but I'm not really familiar with where you forage that from, so let's do a quick Google search to find out. Okay, apparently I just need to kill all creatures that I see for a chance to drop more. Anyway, I decided to go to the pet store. They have tons of creatures there. Got kind of distracted by the cute kittens. After explaining to the staff what I was trying to do, they pointed me to a section of the store where they sell actual rawhide. So that was kind of nice. To extract the sweet, sweet glue from inside the rawhide, we're going to need to start a campfire. Put the raw hides in a little pot with some water and let them boil for several hours. Not sure if it was done or not, I decided to check in on them and test the consistency. Hmm. Yeah, it still needs a bit longer to thicken it up a bit. You'll know when it's done if it sort of looks like this when you open up the pot. Notice that it, it looks a lot like the branded stuff you can buy in stores. I'm on to you, Eileen. Alright, now let's start carving some cardboard. Making sure to properly tenderize the boards lets me cut through them much easier. Scoring, bending, and snapping make quick work of them. The idea here is to build up a base by layering multiple pieces of cardboard until the desired height is reached. I'm using some of that glue we made before. We dot each corner and press them together, hammering in some wooden nails in order to keep the pieces together and stop them from drifting apart as the glue dries. I had some scrap cereal box or thin cardstock, and I'll be using these to cloud the sides of the cardboard edges. No need for measuring, just lining it up and marking it. 
I'm holding this in place with a little bit of primordial masking tape, or cave tape. It's green because it's made from plants. It's made from plants. The rawhide glue can also be used as a gap filler in parts where the pieces almost touch. To hold the ramp in place, I'm wedging some more wooden nails in place. Wooden nails. And now that the base is taking shape, I add some further details with more strips of cereal box. I think this was a box of Captain Caveman. I'm not sure. Multigrain cereal. To make the vertical parts, I cut up some mirrored pieces of cardboard and glue them in place. This angle piece makes it look more futuristic, I think. Using an empty roll of cave masking tape, I start thinking about ways to set up the portal opening. Ignore this strange tool over here, I'm not sure what that is or how it got there. Throne of Lies. I end up going for this sort of configuration for the portal as it adds an element of interest to the backside too. Then I got the idea that I can suspend the smaller circle above the pillars as a sort of raised focusing mechanism for the portal to work. I don't really know how this technology works as I'm just a simple caveman. Further detailing with cardstock on top made the ring look a bit more interesting. One way to make almost anything look more futuristic is adding some cables, of course. I replaced my cave sneaker shoelaces recently and I had these old ones left over. Cutting up some paper straws for terminal connectors lets me drape sections of the shoelace between them. If you're having problems with the frayed edge of the shoelace, just take a bit of a flame to it. This following step is not necessary, but if you want to make sure that the conduits don't move, you could cheat a little and add some super glue to freeze them in place. Throne of lies. Now this all still looks like junk, but we're gonna fix that with one easy step. Black tar from the tar pits. Mix this with some aggregate and water it down slightly and then slather it all over the portal. give some smooth blends, we start with the Zenithal highlight. I do this by spraying some paint through the straw directly from above. You can use a similar approach with other colors. I use a mixture of dark blue and pale green to get a nice gradient towards the middle. And you can absolutely do this with a boreback bristle brush if you don't own a paper straw or you don't have the lung capacity to blow it as a fine mist like me. I realize I'm alienating a lot of my audience that actually wants to use 3D printers for terrain building. And don't worry guys, I have you covered too. After finishing up the cardboard portal, I also sketched and modeled it on the computer. So that you can 3D print it at home on an FDM printer, or a large format resin printer like the Mono X6K. I did end up making a separate short video reviewing the Anycubic printer as well. Linked only in the card above if you want to take a look. Meanwhile, I need to finish painting the 3D printed portal as well. So I'm gonna let you go now. Go ahead and click on a different video, I guess. Cheers.